What's up, college football fans? Noi Valenta here once again with the Mean Green Show. Today, joined by Jared Kalmus, and we're going to dive into a little bit of the UTSA expectations and predictions for the 2024 season. But before we get into all that, guys, you already know the drill. If you're a fan of college football or G5 football, consider hitting the like and subscribe button because that's truly all that we talk about. Jared, I appreciate it. I know this is taking a little while due to the hurricane. I'm mm -hmm. glad you're okay and you got your power back on. But, you know, how, how's your summer been? And where can everybody find the coverage that you guys do for UTSA? Yeah, well, first off, it's been several weeks because I think you texted me while I was boarding my flight from vacation. So I was gone for two weeks, and then I come back to a hurricane, didn't have power for a week. Uh, so just so the listeners know, uh, you've been very diligent in bringing me on, so thank you. Um, but yeah, for those that don't know, um, I'm the co-host for the Alamo Audible. Uh, we've been covering UTSA for uh, pretty much as long as the program's been around. Um, so during the season, we usually do like, you know, two episodes a week uh, covering all things UTSA. You know, we... We're football guys. We have a huge focus on football, but uh, we do a lot more than that as well. Uh, so we're on the uh, Dave Campbell's Texas Football Republic of Football Podcast Network. It's always a mouthful, so you can find us on there or at alamoaudible.com. There's not too many people who can say that they've been covering the program since the program has started. That's pretty – I never yeah. really thought about that, but that, that's interesting. Yeah. It's something I take a lot of pride in, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, getting right into it. So what are the expectations or, you know, the I guess – I don't know, but – Year one removed from the Frank Harris era. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, post FH, you know, like you would put, you know, AD, yeah. <laughs> uh, BC on, on the calendar. Uh, it kind of feels like that for UTSA, right? Um, Frank wasn't his best last year. He played through a lot of injury, uh, but he was still great. You know, uh, he had his struggles, but it's, you know, that presence on the field in the locker room and all of that, that it's going to be a huge miss, right? Like it's, it's a huge question if anyone is going to even come close to replacing uh, his leadership ability, his ability to, uh, you know, kind of be a calming presence um, and inspire, you know, the guys to, to play their best, right? Uh, to know their off, know the offense and all of that. So, you know, I think UTSA fans know that, uh, you know, the team may not be as clutch or maybe as well-rounded as they've been with Frank Harris. Uh, but I think there's still an expectation that this team can compete for a championship, right? Um, it's, it's a, I think it's gonna be a weak league again this year. You know, I think the, the bottom of the league is going to be pretty down, um, yet again. Right. So, and I think the schedule for UTSA is a lot more manageable this season. So, you know, I could see a scenario where UTSA kind of matches the win total from last year, uh, but maybe isn't as good of a team all around. Right. So it's really going to come back to that quarter, come down to that quarterback position, which I'm sure we're going to dive into real soon. Oh yeah. Like, like right now. So, yeah. So I guess. Owen McCown, he hasn't officially been named the starter, but is he, is that, is that the ex expectation he will be the starter is, like around the program? Yeah, I would say he's like the betting favorite, right? Uh, when you download, I don't know when this is going to go live, but when you download the college football video game this week, he'll, he'll be the, uh, the top rated quarterback there and he'll be your starter in the video game. So we'll oh, see yeah. how productive that is, but. Uh, you know, he, he's already got a start under him at UTSA. You know, uh, famously, he won UTSA's first bowl game in a comfort behind victory um, over Marshall and uh, played well against Tennessee as well, started four games at Colorado. Um, so I think just from the experience standpoint, he's got the leg up over um, Eddie Lee Marburger there. But I think he's just a better fit for the offense as well. You know, he, um, I don't I don't know if he's athletic, as athletic as like peak Frank Harris was back in like 2021. But his ability to read the defense, find the open guy, get the ball out quickly, keep the sticks moving, um, I think is what's going to win him that position battle. Um, and, you know, it's not really in Jeff Trailer's, um, you know, demeanor to name a starter, you know, before kickoff. <laughs> it's probably going to be the same way. Uh, we're probably going to hear, you know, Owen McCallum starting, uh, you know, 15 minutes before kickoff against Kennesaw State. But uh, it definitely seems to be trending that direction that, that Owen's going to be the guy. So Trey Moore, he he obviously tests the portal and, and, and winds up at Texas. How do you expect him to do at Texas, if you had to guess? I, I think he's going to be pretty good. I, I think the question is, if he, is he just going to be that third down pass rush specialist? Or is his game complete enough that he can handle um, the rigor of playing all three downs in the SEC? Right? Because he's, he's a smaller guy. You know, he's, what, 6'3", 230, 240, something like that. Uh, typically, for that position, you're going to see probably 20 more pounds of muscle for an SEC edge rusher like that. Um, but I think he's definitely going to be able to uh, be pretty effective. Um, I, I saw one report out of Texas's camp that said he was the best player in the defense. That was just one guy's opinion, right? But uh, even for one person to feel that way, I think it's a pretty good indication that he's going to be a pretty big-time player for them. 
even as a North Texas fan, just hearing that, it, that I feel the sting there. Hear, hearing that, you know, you lose a guy and he's, you know, one person's opinion, right, of mm-hmm. the best guy on the defense on an SEC team. That That's crazy in Texas of all teams. But nevertheless, G5, that, that's the world that we live in. Um, casualties happen. So speaking of yeah. that, have there been any other UTSA casualties to the portal this offseason that are notable? Really just one to speak of. Um, that was Cam Alexander. So – this is what it's hard for UTS fans to complain about because they got him out of the portal from Sam Houston. And he came in and, you know, he was a starter from day one, uh, really blossomed on the stretch of conference play and in the bowl game. And uh, he got into the portal and ended up with Washington and uh, got a massive NIA deal, right? So it's it's hard if you're a UTS fan to really, you know, wag the finger and say, no, you need to be loyal when he left his previous school to, to go up a level. Um, so he was a great player, but he was only here for one year, right? So I think it's... Um, a little bit more replaceable. It was like a rental, right? Um, if you think of, you know, from pro sports perspective, contract year, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but uh, definitely leaves a pretty big presence at the quarterback position. Uh, but then what you see a lot of from UTSA is they lose a guy from the portal. They go back in the portal and get a guy that arguably is more talented, right? Um, so in this case, they went and got Denver Harris, who some of your listeners may be familiar with. Uh, he was a five-star that signed you know, with Texas A&M and that, uh, that sliced bread class. Uh, they, they got the number one recruiting class, and everyone's like, oh, they're cheating or whatever. Uh, that was him, and uh, he was a major contributor as a true freshman. Uh, made some big plays for the Aggies, uh, but ran into a lot of trouble there off the field. Uh, famously, he recorded a video of himself driving through a parking garage on North Gate in like, a Lamborghini or something, like speeding around corners, right? Um, just always doing dumb stuff like that. So I think he got kicked out of the program at AM, went to LSU, same deal. Big time player, was seeing playing time, was competing well in the SEC, got in trouble off the field again. So I've tried not to put too much expectations into him just because some guys are just boneheads, right? And I, I, I'm sure, you know, having played football yourself, you, you probably play with those guys that they have all the talent in the world, but they just can't get out of their own way. So um, all reports from UTSA are that he's completely turned the corner. Uh, he's been a leader in the locker room. He's completely focused, his head on straight. Um, interesting enough, uh, wide receiver coach Joe Price coached him in high school, right? So they have kind of that you know, parental relationship, I guess, for lack of a better word, uh, where he can give that guidance and mentorship. But, you know, if, if he is able to stay on the field and stay out of trouble, uh, that's just a level of talent that's never been seen in this program before. Um, so he should be able to dominate, you know, in any number one receiver in the AAC if he's ready to go. What was the biggest focus in recruiting for UTSA this offseason? How do you feel about the t- the 2024 class as a whole? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was an interesting class for sure. Uh, it, it almost felt like they had their areas of focus and they just tried to get the best talent available uh, wherever they could. So offensive line was a big focus. Um, they lost a few guys there in the offseason and they went heavy on power five transfers. So off the top of my head, I want to see that one got four or five power five transfers on the offensive line. Um, which was good. That was needed. That made sense. That was expected. What was unexpected is how hard they went for the running back position. I think they signed like four or five running backs. Um, some of them transfers, some high school guys, um, pretty wide range in, in ages and, and um, you know, years of eligibility. But I just didn't expect that to be an area of focus for UTSA because they returned all three top rushers from last year. Kevorian Barnes, Rocco Griffin, Robert Henry. So every time UTSA got another commitment from running back, I was like, okay, one of those guys must be going to the portal, but they're all still there, right? So I don't really know how they're going to manage that position with that much talent there. Um, so that was pretty interesting, but I mean, they're, they're just loaded, right? With speed and talent um, at that position. So we'll see if they're going to do more two running back sets or, or just feed the running backs more. I don't know. Um, but then lastly, the other focus I would say was inside linebacker. So that was a position that was super thin for UTSA last year. Um, they had Jamal Ligon, who was really good. And then Martavius French, the Tennessee transfer, kind of came into his own a little bit towards the latter half of the season. Um, so you feel pretty good about those two guys going into the year. They're probably going to be the likely starters, but the depth behind them was pretty much non-existent. Um, so again, they went and got transfers. They got Brevin Randall from Louisiana Tech, um, who's got some pretty good reviews. Uh, they got, uh, I think, uh, Ken Blackshire was the name of the, the Texas transfer, who was previously at Alabama. Um, and then a couple other guys as well. Uh, Ian Jackson from Alabama. So I think all those guys just uh, completely up-leveled uh, the expectation for depth at that position and the physicality there as well. Um, so that was great to see. Overall, I think they did a great job bringing talent. I think this roster is going to be incredibly deep. And from top to bottom, you know, all 85 scholarship positions are probably stronger in talent than they've ever been for the program. 
But I do worry about like roster balance, right? Like running back is crazy deep, cornerback is super thin, right? Offensive line, very deep, safety, very thin, right? So it's just like the balance of that I have a little bit of concern about. So we'll see like if the injury bug hits on one of those positions, but that's something that could, you know, impact UTSA pretty strongly this year. When Zakari Franklin hit the portal again from Ole Miss, was there any thought and when it initially happened that you thought maybe that there might be a, a reunion? Do you know if he was ever reached out to from the staff? Uh, yeah. Do you have any intel on that? Uh, I thought it might happen, but uh, sources shut it down pretty firmly. Hmm. Uh, I'll right. leave you to, to fill in the gaps there, uh, okay. as you can likely imagine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, you know, again – covering group of five there's going to be casualties every year that like some of them are just inevitable like a tray more or whatever there's just going to be offers on the table that are just you can't really match however how do you feel utsa is in the arms race of nil and are they in a position to where if you know x y and z player have a breakout year that they could hopefully retain that uh, are they in a position to do that? Like they did with Frank Harris. I mean, that might've been kind of a play of loyalty of just mm -hmm. him being a San Antonio born and bred, but, yeah, but, but he what are your thoughts? Deal, you know? That's right. So yeah. yeah. Are they, do you have any idea of, are, are they in position to, to put those type of numbers down? If, if the production calls for it? Yeah. I don't, I don't know if they can do like those Frank Harris type deals often. I mean, that was a super unique situation. I mean, he is like the Heisman of UTSA, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, every every quarterback that comes through here will be compared to him for generations to come. Overall, I think the NIL, NIL program is pretty strong for a group of five program. They're probably not where like Memphis is at, Boise, Tulane. They all have super strong NIL programs. So UTSC is probably like a step behind that, but pretty competitive, right? Um, and they've been able to retain talent. You know, that the fact that they had the big season they had last year with a lot of young guys and only lost those two dudes, I think is pretty phenomenal. So you're not going to be able to match a lot of those, you know, power to uh, NIL offers that are out there. But if you can at least get them, you know, a couple thousand a month or something like that, you know, guys will take the loyalty and this sure thing over, you know, taking the risk of, of making a jump. Right. I, I'm sure most people have that experience in their careers. Like I could go get more money elsewhere, but I really like my boss. Right. So I'm going to stick around and, and see what happens. So um, one guy I'd point to as an example is Joe Evans. Right. He was a defensive lineman transferred from LSU to UTSA and the portal market for defensive linemen was super weak this year. Um, a lot of guys that were like 68 overall in PFF were getting like these massive NIL deals from power five programs. Uh, and there were a lot of rumors that Joe Evans, you know, had been approached with some crazy numbers and he shot them all down and stayed at UTSA. And I, you know, I don't know what kind of NIL he's gotten from the collectives and, and other sources at UTSA. I'm, I'm sure it's nowhere near competitive with that. Uh, but maybe it's enough to where he's like, you know, I'm satisfied. I can pay the bills. I can help mom out or whatever. And, uh, you know, I feel like I can make the NFL from from where I'm at today. So let's let it ride. So I think UTSA has done a good job. But I think you got to give Jeff Trailer in the majority of the credit for that, that he's been able to retain guys, even though they can't go dollar for dollar with a lot of programs. Are there any position battles that you're particularly interested in going into fall camp? Mm -hmm. Number one for me is center. I think the center position battle I, i'm such an offensive line nerd that's the first one that comes out of my mouth like there's not a sure for sure starter quarterback i'm like oh yeah the center battle is pretty good. uh but i think that might be one of the most like electric like strength on strength position battles we've seen at utsa in a while right so they're going to bring back luke lopez who i think he was a starter last year he may have started some games the year before that uh but you know, he won a bowl game at utsa he was a really strong center last year as a sophomore i believe he was uh, but then they went out and got C.J. James from New Mexico. Uh, they had a coaching change there. And C.J. James was like the first team all-conference Mountain West, right? Uh, he was rated super high on PFF. Um, so those two guys, you know, the experience that Lopez has, Lopez has uh, compared to, you know, just the results that C.J. James has had, that's going to be an electric position battle. And, you know, no matter what guy wins, you're, you're going to know that you've got a really good option there as your starter. Um, so that's going to be fun to watch to see who emerges there. Um, and I think the wide receiver room is also one to really keep an eye on. Uh, you know, you mentioned Zakari. He was gone the year before that, but, you know, still felt his the void uh, with him being gone this past season. But Josh Cephas really stepped up and replaced a lot of production. Well, he's in the NFL now as well. So out of that original big three that you just had at uh, the receiver position, you still have um, um, DeCorey and Clark, JT Clark out there. Uh, but his health status is a real unknown, right? He's had a lot of setbacks with his knee injury. 
So we're not sure if and when he'll be able to go. Um, so there's definitely like snaps up for grabs. Um, I think JJ Sparkman, the Texas Tech transfer, is likely going to get one of the starting positions. Uh, but I think there's a lot of guys that they could have a breakout season. So we'll have to see like which guys really emerge in fall camp as you know likely starters and, and go-to options. All right, last question. What is a few questions, obviously, and mm-hmm. I was, we saw, we talked a little pre-tape. It's almost impossible to predict these things, being that it's so far out and yeah. with the transfer portal, new teams. But going down the schedule real quick, I'll I'll say each team, and you just predict win or loss. So number one, we got Kennesaw State coming to the Alamo Dome. That's a win, man. Yeah, Port, Port, Kennesaw is gonna be in for a tough time. Their first year in FBS at Texas State. I still think that one's a win. But man, woo! It's it's a clincher. McLeod, McLeod, that's he might. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good one. We'll see. At Texas. Loss for sure. Uh Houston Christian. Win. At East Carolina. Win. At Rice. Rice is gonna be salty this year. But I got I gotta put it as a win. Why do you feel so high on Rice? You're not the only person who said that. A lot of people are kind of yeah. high, pretty high on Rice. What, what gives Think you about that? Rice, man. They're good when they have a quarterback. And they've mm-hmm. got a quarterback. they got E.J. Warner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, So True. you know they're going to be strong in the trenches. Uh, they could use some more playmakers, but uh, they're just a really sound team. And when they've got a gunslinger there, like they're going to have this year, they'll yeah. win eight, nine games. It wouldn't shock me. Yeah. Florida FAU. Oh, dude, I have no idea what to expect with FAU. I feel like they've turned over the whole roster. Uh, it's at home, so I'll go with a win. At Tulsa. Win. Memphis. I think I got to say a loss on that one. North Texas. Hard, hard, hard to bet against him again, yeah, you know? I, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, North Texas. Oh, man, I don't know. I guess I'll take a win. Temple. Win. And Army. Army is UTSA's number, man. I'm, I'm taking a loss on that one. That's that, 93. That might lock them out of uh, championship contention. Yeah, that that's that's right. Last year, was weren't you guys what wasn't UTSA totally in until like the last game? As far as like the contention for, for yeah, the, yeah, yeah, they they lost to Tulane in an essential play that's game. Right. That's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah, that's something, man. That, so nine and three. I feel like you, you, the 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 average fan, the new fan, they don't know like the, you know what I mean. They haven't really experienced a hard season. Like they've they've kind I know. of uh, they're hey. running a ticket promo sale where if you graduated through the Jeff Trailer era, that you can get discounted season tickets or whatever. And I'm like, man, how spoiled to have graduated only knowing Jeff Trailer squads. Like, what, what a blessing that is, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Jared, I appreciate it. Once again, I'm sure we'll talk soon. And I really can't wait to talk your ear off here off, off tape about the EA College football game. Yeah, sounds good. Well, thanks for having me back on. It's always a great time.